The human heart, the seat of our innermost emotions, and a vital organ in our story today. This is where it all begins. Yet for thousands of years, something so important as the heart and the circulatory system and the problems of high blood pressure were hardly understood. Who were the amazing men who brought us that incredible knowledge? We're here at St Bartholomew's Hospital in London, an ancient place of healing, to begin a journey to discover some of the amazing people often forgotten, but who nonetheless contributed to the discovery of the circulation, blood pressure measurement, and understanding of the risks of high blood pressure, and, most importantly, created the modern treatments we use today. All too often in our modern busy lives, in the care of people with high blood pressure, we don't really give much thought to how the discoveries that have contributed to our modern understanding of the circulation were made. And, uh, so I brought you here today, Brian, to the Great Hall at Barts in London. It is amazing to think that um, over 400 years ago, in this very place or nearabouts, the first description of the circulation was made. Um, but we should give credit to the fact that the pieces of the jigsaw were probably being put together uh, long before that historic discovery. We can go back to the Chinese Emperor Dynasty in the 2500 BC, where there are descriptions of the hardening of the pulse. The ancient Chinese decided there were two circulatory systems taking vital fluids around the body, a basis for their system of acupuncture. Hippocrates, one of the most famous names in medicine from ancient Greece, suggested that blood flows in a circle, but he didn't know how. Claudius Galen, a Roman physician, through examination of the human body, came to his most important discovery that arteries carried blood but he didn't crack the secret of the circulation. That amazing discovery had to wait almost 1,500 years until the arrival of William Harvey, who worked here at St Bartholomew's Hospital. Harvey had studied at Padua in Italy, at that time the centre of medical learning. His teacher, Fabricus, had recognised valves in veins, but didn't realise what they did. Harvey returned to England to continue his studies. He was appointed to St Bartholomew's Hospital in 1609 and went on to become physician to both King James I and his successor, King Charles I. Both of these royals took a close interest in the work of William Harvey and encouraged his research. Through experimentation on animals, he began to make the observations that convinced him that the blood circulated round the body from arteries through to veins and was pumped by the heart. He pulled all these observations together in his book in 1628, De Morta Cordis, a study of the motion of the heart and blood in animals. So we have here uh, some of Harvey's original work from that time. I mean, it's, it's just incredible to think it took nearly 1,500 years to get from Galen uh, to this concept. Why do you think it took so long? Well, I think there were a series of incremental observations made along the way, but um, it was a difficult time. Yeah, I, maybe also because, in fact, to challenge Galen and Galen's theories was really heresy at the time. And, and Harvey was, in fact, not only a brilliant scientist, but also an extremely brave man. Indeed he was. His enormous intellect had laid the foundations for our modern understanding of the circulation and put the heart at the centre of the human body. Though it wasn't till much later that the enormity of his findings were appreciated, our journey has begun. <laughs> 